Welcome back to Life on the Big Flat. In part four of this series, I'm going to be plotting out two more properties into this community. So previously, I have plotted out my great-grandfather's property, my great-great-grandfather's property, my great-grandmother's property, the school where all my grandmother and all her siblings attended, and two properties of family friends who show up in photos and memories. And in this episode, I am going to add to this map by plotting out the properties of two of my grandmother's aunts. In this series, I'll be mapping out the homesteading community where my grandmother lived in a desolate area of northern Montana. I'll be going through all the photos, all the family stories, all the memories, and putting them here on this map to get a better idea of what life was like on the big flat. Okay, so in part three, I gave you guys the recommendation of trying to plot out the family friends who you have photos of or who appear in some memoirs maybe that your family wrote down. And I kept reading through those family memoirs, memories, and realized that so many of the memories revolved around aunts, my great-grandmother's sister and my great-grandfather's sister. And my grandmother always remembers going to visit her aunts, playing with her cousins, and I was just curious as to where these properties were. Specifically because in one of the memories, my grandmother's sister wrote that she remembers always walking to Aunt Ida or Aunt Lottie's property, and she specifically says over two miles. So as I showed you in one of the previous parts of this video series, you can actually use Google My Maps to see how far away properties are. So I want to see if I'm mapping these correctly, especially because I have the specific length of about two miles that they would walk. So that adds an interesting little touch to this video to see if I'm mapping everything out right. Um, and I'm excited just to keep building this big flat community here near Hoagland. So let's dive into it. So the first aunt that we're going to be mapping out is uh, my grandmother's father's sister. Her name was Ida Berggren, and she married a man named Newt Newtson. And I know the property would be under Newt's name, so luckily there was only one Newt Newtson in the big flat here. Newt Newtson. Lots of Newtsons, but only one Newt. Uh, so let's just click on his details here. He was also a homesteader, which is no surprise. Most people, if not all people in this community were homesteaders. And let's just see where his property was. Okay, so that is fairly close to where my grandmother grew up on her father's property, which I think was right here. Um, this would be a pretty easy one to map. It looks like it just borders the road that the Hoagland Airport is on today. Goes up um, just past this lake here, all the way up to Skyview Road or West End Loop Road. So I believe that it is just half this property here. You see there's a square here, and it's just the lower half of this square. And to make sure that I'm on the right track, let's go over to the satellite. And you will see that there is this property here. Always check the satellite images because typically these property lines haven't changed much and you can still see sort of where the farms are delineated between one another. So it looks like this was where Aunt Ida and her husband Newt lived on this property here. So uh, let's just add in their property really quick. Oops. Down. Over. Up and over. Okay, so now we have that. Um, this was Aunt Ida, and this doesn't look like two miles to me if this was where my grandmother grew up and that's Aunt Ida's property. That does not look like two miles, and to test that we can just go up here to this little ruler marker, pick a place. Um, as I've explained in previous videos, I'm not exactly sure where the house was on this property. I'm not sure if this was the house or if I mapped that incorrectly. Um, let's just say here, and you can do as the bird flies. So actually that does look like about a mile to this property, but it's not two miles. And the memory specifically says they walked over two miles to their aunt's houses. So maybe it wasn't Aunt Ida's house, it could have been Aunt Lottie's house. 
So Aunt Lottie was my grandmother's mother's sister and Lottie Gardner, and she actually married my grandmother's father's brother. So there's a bunch of double cousins in the family. Luckily for us, there's only one John Bergren in Blaine County, Montana. Pretty sure that's uh, who I'm looking for. So let's see where his properties were. Also a homesteader, not surprising. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, and this is an area of Blaine County that I'm not familiar with. Looks like we're up sort of in the mountains a little bit. Um, let's try to find Hoagland. Okay, so Hoagland is down here. Here's the property of Ida Bergren Knutson that we just plotted. Um, this was where my grandmother and my great grandfather lived. So it looks like Aunt Lottie lived up here. And that looks, that looks to me like more of what we're thinking when we say over two miles. So let's try to map that. So I'm gonna try to do it the old-fashioned way of how I typically do these. So let's try to find Alkali Lake Road and Poland Road, the intersection there. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the normal map and we're looking for the intersection of Alkali Road and Poland Road. Okay, here's Alkali Road and, oh sorry, not Poland Road. Pol Polak. I like how the spelling changes when you cross over. Okay, but not Poland. Um, Polak Road. Okay, well that's interesting because here it definitely says Poland Road, so I wonder when that changed. Um, I think that we are in the right area though. Let's see. The road should come up a little bit and then curve up. Let's see if that is accurate. Yep, so we are in the right corner. Let's just zoom out a little bit. So it looks like specifically Aunt Lottie and John lived up Alkali Road. Um, the top of their property sort of started right after this little indent here. So I'm going to go back over to our map. And here's the indent. So the property probably started about right here. Well, there is a line here. The problem is I just don't know how far down their property went. And see, this is also pretty interesting because it looks like this land wasn't really homesteaded much, which is surprising because I think it was their main property. This was the property that they lived on and farmed on. So I'm surprised that today it isn't, it doesn't look like it's really survived except down here. So we know that their property started here. Probably see this faint line here. That's probably where it started and I just don't know how far right it went, how far east it went. Um, if we zoom out a little bit. So it looks like it went just as far right to almost intersect with this river here. Let's see if we can find that on our other map. Um, I assume this is the river here. I think this brown spot is maybe the river. So maybe it came up all the way to where this property was. I'm gonna assume that was the case. So maybe we can just map that out. Let's just draw a line. I'm gonna start here where this faint line is and just go all the way east into to where like this property line ends because that seems like it might be accurate just go there or so so this is actually my first time using the terrain map on google my maps but this is actually very helpful um, because if you'll notice the map that blm glow gives you is largely a terrain map i mean it shows the elevation heights of everything and that's something that the satellite map and the base map and Google Maps don't show you. But there is also a terrain map that I've clicked in. And this is pretty helpful. So if we go back to the BLM Glow, let's see if I've done this correctly. The property goes just past where this elevation change is, but not quite to the river. And there I have it, just past the elevation, but not quite to the river. And it goes as far south as just above where this little inlet comes, but not quite there. So let's see if I can find that here. Here's the little inlet. So I'm going to assume maybe like right here, maybe like right here. Let's put a line there. You know, actually, let's just draw a shape. So I'm going to start it maybe like right here. Up. Over. Down and 
over. Now let's see if that lines up with anything on the satellite map. So I'm pretty close. I assume that maybe it the property ended where this property starts. See this line here? So I can just move these up so they align with that. Move this over a little bit. And there we have a property. I'm gonna delete this line here that I made and I'm gonna name this. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, one of the memories that my grandmother's sister has is walking over two miles, specifically that's what the quote says, over two miles, to their aunt's house. Um, and she remembers her mom pushing the baby buggy all the way there. It's just a really cute memory. This seems like pretty far away though. I mean, that seems like well over two miles. Let's just see. Um, we're gonna do this ruler here. I'm just gonna pick a point on the property and go all the way up. Okay, so that's that's five miles. So that makes me wonder if this is not actually the property that I am looking for and that concerns me. I came back to BLM Glow to make sure that there were no other Bergren properties that I'm missing. And these were all the Bergrens that lived in Blaine County. So this is my great grandfather. This is my great grandmother. You'll see that she had her own homestead property and then that she came into ownership of it after she was married because she started homesteading when she was still single. So that's her property there, which I've previously mapped. And the only other Bergren is John Bergren, Lottie's husband. And this is the property that we mapped. I do want to see if maybe Lottie had her own homestead. And maybe that's actually where the family decided to settle. Hmm. Okay, so I don't see a Lottie Gardner or a Charlotte Gardner. I do see Mary Agnes Gardner, who was my great grandmother's other sister, the other sister of Helen and Lottie. But it doesn't look like Lottie ever had her own homestead. So, you know, it could just be that the memories are mixed up. I mean, this certainly was over two miles, a very, very long walk, but you know, five miles isn't terribly far to walk to see your cousins. It's not like it's 20 miles away. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. So now we've expanded this community a bit farther north into this wilderness area here, pretty close to the Canadian border, which is exciting. <laughs> and this is really insightful. Um, I'm sort of just getting a better idea of how these memories came to be. If I really wanted to get into this and really picture what life was like, I could map out who lived all in these properties all the way on the walk to John and Lottie's property, just to see like what properties my grandma would have walked through to get to her aunt's house, but that would be a bit over the top. You know, maybe you're watching this and your family is from Blaine County and maybe your family lived on one of these properties or maybe you still live on one of these properties. So if that's the case, know that back in 1925, a little girl named Eloise used to walk through your property up to her aunt's house. <laughs> That's all I have for today. Thanks for tuning in to part four of Life on the Big Flat as I continue to map out this Montana homesteading community. Thanks for watching this video. If this was helpful for you, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I post tutorials like this and also travel vlogs when I travel to the places that my ancestors live because Rome Your Roots is all about genealogy tourism. And also follow my Instagram page at Romeo Roots if you have an Instagram and that is something that interests you.